Hello, I am Surgeon General and in this video I will be going over critical strike mechanics in Path of Exile with a focus on the unique amulet, Marilene's Fallacy, and how its use can be optimized to scale damage. Marilene's Fallacy is a unique lapis amulet with a straightforward premise. It provides a huge increase to your character's critical strike multiplier, up to 240% with a perfect roll, but at the downside of a 40% less multiplier to your critical strike chance. In short, it makes it much less likely for you to critically strike, but greatly increases your damage when you do. Note that the downside reads, less critical strike chance. This means that it scales your crit chance multiplicatively, rather than additively, like most other increased critical strike chance modifiers found in the game. Marilene's also provides culling strike on critical strike. This means that any crit on an enemy with less than 10% of their maximum health will instantly kill them. This can be treated as a 10% more damage multiplier against single targets. Finally, we should note what isn't on the item. Apart from a small amount of evasion rating, there are no defensive mods such as life or resistances on Marilene's Fallacy. This item is intended to be a fully offensive item for critical strike based characters. To understand when Marilene's Fallacy should be considered for use, we must first understand how critical strikes are treated in Path of Exile. A character's critical strike chance is given by their base crit chance plus any additions to that base, all multiplied by sources of increased critical strike chance. The base crit chance will depend on whether the character is using a spell or attack skill. In general, for spells, the base crit chance is built onto the skill gem itself. For attacks, the skill will use the base crit chance on your character's weapon. To add to this, there are many sources of additional base critical strike chance. Commonly used sources include skill gems, such as Increased Critical Strike Support and Assassin's Mark, the Brittle Ailment, and mods on equipment, like Influenced Body Armors and Corrupted Implicits on Gloves. After all sources of base crit chance are added together, they are multiplied by the sum of all the characters' increased critical strike chance sources. This scaling can come from a wide variety of sources, such as passive skills, explicit and implicit mods on items, and power charges. If the chance for a critical strike to occur succeeds, the hit will deal additional damage based on the character's critical strike multiplier. At baseline, every character starts with a critical strike multiplier of 150%, meaning that their critical strikes deal 50% extra damage compared to a normal hit. This extra damage is added to by all applicable sources of critical strike multiplier. Crit Multi is available from a wide variety of sources including passive skills, rare and unique equipment, and gems. The single largest source of critical strike multiplier in the game is found on Marilene's Fallacy. A perfect roll of 240% can, by itself, almost quadruple the character's base damage on a crit. However, the downside of Marilene's also adds a multiplier of 60% to the critical strike chance calculation. Let's take a look at how these two factors combine to affect the scaling of crit. This graph shows the average extra damage due to critical strikes plotted against crit chance for a character with no external sources of critical strike multiplier. The solid line shows the extra damage for a character without Marilene's Fallacy, and the dashed line shows the results for the same character after equipping Marilene's. Under these conditions, Marilene's is always a damage increase. Even though you will crit less often, the huge additional multiplier that you get when you do succeed makes it worth it. Note the discontinuity in the results for the character without Marilene's. This occurs at a critical strike chance of 100%. At this point, all hits will critically strike and any additional crit chance scaling beyond this point will be wasted. However, with Marilene's Fallacy equipped, the less crit chance modifier reduces the crit chance to only 60%, meaning that it would take additional investment into crit chance in order to cap the crit at 100%. This can be very powerful for characters which have access to significant amounts of critical strike chance scaling, allowing them to scale their damage by pushing beyond the 100% cap that they would otherwise encounter without Marilene's equipped. This analysis showed results for a character with no sources of crit multiplier other than Marilene's. The results can change quite a bit when you start adding in extra sources of crit multi. 
On this graph, I'm showing similar results to the previous chart, but now including a family of curves for characters with different external sources of critical strike multiplier. The red lines are the same results as the previous chart, and the blue, green, and yellow lines show the results for characters with 200, 300, and 400 critical strike multiplier outside of that provided by Marilene's. The important takeaway from this analysis is that as external sources of crit multi are increased, the usefulness of Marilene's decreases. For characters without capped crit chance, there is an efficiency crossover at 310% critical strike multiplier. If your character has more than 310% added crit multiplier, adding Marilene's fallacy to the build would reduce your overall damage. The exception to this is if your character has extremely large critical strike chance, to the point where you are over the 100% cap without Marilene's. There are a few notable interactions that can help deal with the downside on Marilene's fallacy. One method is to force critical strikes to always occur, entirely circumventing the crit chance reduction. This can only happen with a few niche mechanics, such as using the unique helmet Plume of Pursuit with spell skills that repeat, or with the temporary buff granted by Bound Fate. Additionally, the Lightning Tendril skill contains the line, releases a stronger pulse every three pulses. This stronger pulse is guaranteed to always crit, allowing players to scale critical strike multiplier without worrying about crit chance. Finally, players can instead choose to make their critical strike chance lucky using the Dance with Death keystone granted by Brutal Restraint Timeless Jewels. Like other lucky mechanics in Path of Exile, having lucky crit chance makes all crit rolls twice. If either of those rolls succeeds, you will deal a crit. This significantly changes the math on critical strikes, adding effectiveness at lower crit chances. In this graph, I'm showing how the expected damage from critical strikes changes when you have lucky crit chance and no extra sources of crit multi. Instead of a linear increase with crit chance, as shown by the gray line, your expected damage now has quadratic scaling. This makes it so that even at low crit chances, you have more expected damage since you have two chances to succeed on the crit. This applies whether or not you have Marilene's equipped, but it is very useful for reducing the downside of less crit chance, enabling more benefit from the large crit multiplier on Marilene's. So how does this change when you start incorporating other sources of critical strike multiplier? Recall that without lucky crits, there is a crossover at 310% additional crit multi where using Marilene's is a damage decrease. Reperforming the analysis with lucky crits instead, we get the results shown in this chart. At low critical strike chances, the crossover point has increased significantly to approximately 400% crit multi. This means that for characters with lucky crit chance, they can invest in more crit multi and still take Marilene's fallacy without harming their overall DPS. At high crit chances, the damage with Marilene's fallacy scales further than without it, allowing for even larger additional crit multi investment than the 400% at low chances. Lucky crit chance is obviously very powerful when paired with Marilene's, but as with all things in Path of Exile, you have to consider the opportunity costs of taking Dance with Death. First, the keystone is only available from using your Timeless Jewel, preventing you from accessing other powerful Timeless Keystones. Additionally, critical strikes against you will also be lucky. This means that it becomes much more necessary to invest in the reduced extra damage from critical strikes stat. Finally, Danced with Death disables your helmet slot. You will not be able to use some of the extremely strong and popular unique helmets such as Heat Shiver, Sandstorm Visage, and Devouring Diadem. Additionally, rare helmets are often used as large sources of increased mana reservation efficiency. Losing this slot can make it more difficult to fit in auras in your build. I will now summarize when one should consider incorporating Maurelline's Fallacy into their build. First, it should be a high priority if you are already using a synergistic skill or unique item, such as Lightning Tendrils or Plume of Pursuit. These synergies remove the downside of Marilene's Fallacy, making it an obvious choice. The next consideration is opportunity cost. 
The amulet slot has many powerful unique items, both offensively and defensively, which Marilene's needs to be weighed against. Additionally, rare amulets can provide plus levels to gems and sources of life and resists. In my opinion, Marilene's will generally be stronger on attack skills than on spell skills because of the difference in how they scale with gem level. Take for example Flicker Strike, which gets just a little additional damage per gem level, while spell skills like Discharge typically get 10% more damage per level. Recalling how Marilene's allows you to gain additional benefit from Critical Strike Chance that would otherwise leave you at the 100% chance cap, Characters which have large sources of an increased critical strike chance should also strongly consider using Marilene's Fallacy. This would most likely occur on characters who are stacking a large amount of power charges and taking skills that grant additional benefits to those power charges. Marilene's Fallacy is a reasonable option for players who are still progressing their builds and haven't yet built in a large amount of critical strike multiplier. These players could use Marilene's to temporarily scale their damage until they are able to invest in, for example, duels with triple critical strike mods. Finally, remember the breakpoints for Marilene's Fallacy. Your character has a base 150% critical strike multiplier. If you have an additional 310% crit multi on top of that, Marilene's Fallacy will be a damage downgrade. This value increases to 400% if you have lucky crit chance from Dance with Death. There are exceptions to this rule, but you shouldn't use Marilene's with values larger than this unless you understand what you're doing. I hope this video has given you some ideas for how to optimize critical strikes in your own builds. If you have enjoyed the video or are interested in more content of this type or in-depth build guides, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you for your support.